Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of Mining the Comments. We had a few questions posted from last week's video, and one of them comes from Rosalie. And Rosalie asks, I am so sleepy at 5 p.m. onwards. I struggle till 9 p.m. when I go to bed. Then I wake up and I can't sleep. Rosalie, this, uh, I remember this very vividly and it was a terrible time for me. I, I struggled with this uh, for months. I remember at that time I was doing CBTI, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy for Insomnia. And for me, the sleep window was the hours in which we were supposed to go to bed and try and get some sleep. So that window was for me between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. when the alarm would go off. And uh, in my situation, I noticed consistently between 8 and 9 p.m. I would be absolutely exhausted. I, I'd be watching TV with the family and my head would start falling back and forth. My eyelids were so heavy. I, I did almost everything to stay awake until my time, uh, which was 11 p.m. But I remember several different things. So one, uh, when, when I just couldn't handle it anymore, I, I'd go walk around, I'd go for a walk. Otherwise, I'd sit on the kitchen table and color with my daughter. We had a couple of coloring books. And I would notice sometimes I would doze off and I would wake back up and there'd be some scribble on my on my artwork, right? And so clearly I would I was dozing off. Yeah, the most ridiculous uh, thing that happened for me was I would be in the middle of a conversation with my wife and I was actually doing the talking and I would completely fall asleep. And I would wake back up and I'd look at her and she'd be smiling at me and she's like, you know, you you fell asleep. I didn't know this was even humanly possible to fall asleep mid-sentence, but that happened to me on several occasions. So this was, first of all, very frustrating, uh, very scary because I had no idea what was going on. And um, I thought, well, I'm so exhausted that I'm sure when 11 p.m. rolls around, I'm going to fall asleep. I would get ready for bed around 1045. I'd lay in bed and immediately just be wide awake. Felt like this rush of adrenaline. And I would wonder, well, what happened to my sleep drive? What what's going on it, it was it was so frustrating it was so confusing and that went on for months when i finally found the sleep coach school and the teachings of daniel i realized that this this uh actually has a name so what what they call it here in this program we call it the houdini effect so if we remember houdini was a famous magician and uh, the reason why we call it the Houdini effect is because we are so tired, we're so exhausted, and all of a sudden when we go to bed, magically, we feel wide awake. So that's the reason for, for, the, uh, for the name. Um, so to give an example, imagine a scenario. Um, let's say we don't have any sleep problems at all, and it's 1 o'clock in the morning, we're sound asleep, and somebody comes in and starts pounding and knocking on the door aggressively. Most people would wake up and feel a rush of adrenaline and go into a, a fight or flight mode. If we were to investigate, let's say, I don't know, um, there's the paramedics are at the door, but they went to the wrong house. You open the door, you talk to them, you find out what's going on, they go to the neighbor's house, whatever. Um, what happens to us at that moment is the adrenaline rush is keeping us awake, keeping us alert and ready to to protect protect or defend ourselves when we realize there's no real threat there's no concern that it was you know again a mistake or misunderstanding we no longer start to feel that same adrenaline rush or that threat now it may take a little while for us to not feel as scared because of what just happened we were startled awake um, but we can generally go back to sleep after a little while the problem is when it comes to insomnia, the reason why this is happening is because the brain doesn't know the difference be between a perceived threat or a real threat. And so perceived threat, it perceives that sleeping or being awake is dangerous. And so the adrenaline rush comes in right when we're going to bed because it feels like there's a danger there. This is why 
sleep meds generally don't work for most people melatonin or sleepy tea or any of those things because the brain is convinced that it needs to keep you awake to keep you alive and so it's very difficult if you think about it um if it's middle of the night and a bear comes at us for us to go well you know something it's one o'clock in the morning i need to get some sleep and be able to go to sleep that doesn't make any sense so that adrenaline rush is that hyper arousal with the subconscious thinking that there's a real threat so um i hope that that makes sense so what do we do about it right so what we do the program offers a couple of different steps one is befriending wakefulness so with befriending wakefulness we are teaching the subconscious we're teaching the brain that there isn't a fear or threat i i liken befriending wakefulness to going to a doctor's office and sitting in a waiting room and i don't know about you but i've been at doctors where i've had to wait between one to two hours sometimes to see them and it's really boring. We don't want to be there. There's nothing exciting to do. So what do we do to help pass the time? Well, oftentimes you can read something, right? Some of those old periodicals or uh, we can watch TV or maybe even playing games on our phones. So as we start doing those things, it helps to pass the time. Uh, let's say even if you're really tired and there's a couple of couches and nobody else is around, we could probably even just lay down and get some rest. So I liken that to ways of befriending wakefulness so in the middle of the night if we're super awake alert and hyper aroused uh, like you are here rosalie at 9 p.m when you go to bed maybe doing something that you would enjoy right that doesn't mean you have to do exactly what i mentioned you can always find something else that might be pleasant for you maybe go for a walk or whatever it is but letting that subconscious know that there isn't a threat there isn't anything that we need to be worried about and as the subconscious starts to realize and see that there is no threat, that we're responding to it in a calm fashion, slowly that adrenaline starts to come down and it can be very helpful. Also, another um, thing that we teach is the sleepless time window, which is different from uh, the sleep window. And the timeless sleep window for me, it's from 10 p.m. until 7 a.m., still to this day. And what that means is we no longer look at the clock after 10 p.m. And whenever we feel like it would be more pleasant for us to go rest or lay down or go to bed, we do so. If we feel like staying up and watching TV or doing other things, we do that as well. But without knowing what time it is, it can also bring that hyper arousal and that anxiety down quite a bit. So uh, those are two things that you can definitely try that were super helpful for me that a lot of people in the immunity program are doing and can be very beneficial. I hope this was helpful for you, Rosalie. And uh, thank you so much for posting a question. If you have any other, if anybody else has any other questions, please post them on the comments section below and I will go through them and pick one and answer them for the uh, following week. That is all for this week. Um, if you are struggling with sleep issues, I recommend that you go to our website, the Sleep Coach School, and join the immunity program where you'll get support from coaches and from the community. Uh, we also have an app where you can post questions and you can get answers and support, again, from coaches and from all the other individuals in the program, which was so incredibly helpful for me. And last, um, if we would like some one-on-one -on -one support, we also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and you can go to the website again and there's several highly qualified coaches that you can schedule a time with, including myself. But um, anyways, there are several ways that you can get the support. Obviously, you can jump on this channel or one of many uh, of the series that Daniel offers and get support. Until then, have a wonderful week. Be safe. Be kind to yourself. Be patient. The insomnia journey can be a very difficult one, but there is a way out of it. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely proof of that. And so have a wonderful week. Thank you for joining us. Take care. Hi there, it's me, Daniel. And I hope you found the video you just saw eye-opening. I hope you found it really valuable. And if you did, please hit that like button, write a comment, because this way YouTube knows to feed it to other people who can then find their way 
to peaceful sleep. Now, if you would like some more education that is more curated, then we have a free course. Our Ready to Sleep in Five Days free mini course is available on our website, thesleepcoachschool.com, and it may be just what you've been looking for. I hope so, and thanks for being here.